on the Texas A&M Sports Network. From Learfield, live from Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue on Harvey Road in College Station. Welcome to the Aggie Soccer Hour with Coach G. Brought to you by Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue. Visit Rudy's.com to find real Texas barbecue near you. St. Joseph Health, your primary partner for primary care and the official health care provider of Texas A&M Athletics. And by The Pool Guy, a proud partner of Texas A&M Athletics. Now, the Aggie Soccer Hour with Coach G. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the 158th edition of the Aggie Soccer Hour with Texas A&M head coach G. Guerrero. I'm David Ellis. To my right is Coach G. And, of course, to the far right over there, the guy who is actually doing all of the hard work in keeping us on the air, and that's Kevin Munchow. And uh, that is, uh, as you know, if you've listened to this show before, certainly come out to Rudy's. That's that's a difficult task uh, to keep uh, G and I in uh, in line. In indeed. line, that's right. Uh, hey, there's on the on each one of the tables there are some cards. If you have a question you want to ask Coach G or some of the players uh, in the in the uh, second segment, just write it down. Bring it on up here. We will get to it. Speaking of which, we've got a full show tonight. Micaiah McDonald and Sam Smith who both had excellent games this weekend, will be in the house here starting in the second segment and then in the third segment of the show. Assistant Coach Seth Taylor will join us. Um, he is the uh, new assistant coach on the staff as we give you an opportunity to meet him. So the Aggies got underway on Thursday evening and then Sunday evening with uh, two very, very good teams in Florida State and Washington State came up on the short end. Two to one to Florida State, giving up a very late goal in that game. And then same thing, pretty much, uh, Washington State, a loss of, of three to two for Texas A&M. The Aggies, and I know this is what really kind of eats, uh, uh, I think in a lot of ways, eats at coaches and fans for that matter, is that the Aggies uh, could have won both games. Yeah, and uh, in, in both in both cases, I think that, you know, you can see that the, that, that the team is really good, that our team is, is good enough to win both of these games. And in both instances, you know, a situation where, you know, the team was was straight up as competitive as each of these teams. You know, the, the Florida State game, Florida State is a, a team that has been in the last the last three uh, Final Fours. They've won three national championships. Uh, several of their players just coming back from playing in the World Cup down in New Zealand and Australia. And the, the game was straight up even for uh, for much of the match. If you look at the uh, if you look at the possession, if you look at the chances, if you look at the shots, if you look at the corner kicks, if you look at all the stats, it was a it was a, a very even game. And uh, you know they scored a goal uh, off a deflection to go up one nothing. Um, Sammy Smith, who's one of our guests tonight, scores a terrific goal to uh, to to level the game up right before halftime for us. And then, um, you know, then they score one late in the 87th minute to uh, t- to win it. And you know, did we have chances? Yeah, we had chances to uh, to tie it. And you know, you, you kind of walk away going, yes, you know, gosh, we, we kind of let one off off the hook there. And um, you know, could we have tied that game? Yeah, we, we we probably could have. And I know Florida State felt really good about getting away with the uh, with the win. Then you go into Sunday in a game where we control the game and, you know, outshoot, outshoot uh, the Cougars by, by a wide margin, and we give away three goals. And we, we, we miss chances after chance 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 and dot, dot, dot. And, uh, and, and, they, and they get away with some gifts, and, uh, and we lose three to two. So, um, you know, it just made it to where, you know, you kind of walk away going, okay, we can win these games, and these are. But at the same time, these are why I schedule teams like this at the start of the season because these are the these are the tests that we have to know about. These are the tests that we need to put ourselves in at this time of the season because when selection committees are going to look back at games that you quote lose, if it's the first game of the season, the first weekend of the season, then it's like okay, well that was the first weekend of the season. How did they do after that? And that now is, is the question. How will we do after the after that? How will this team learn from this? How will this team step forward and adjust from this? And, you know, we still have a lot of chances for, uh, 
for some really good wins starting this Saturday when Baylor comes to town. And the opportunities are, are still ahead of us. And today was a, a terrific day of training for the team. It was still warm out there, so we're still in an environment where we need to get out there and, uh, and, and play hard and, and be in a, in a challenging environment. But, you know, it's, 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 it's play, it's learn, and now it's adjust and, and go forward. I wanted to mention one thing, because it was in this particular weekend, and it was this way, a and Washington State, Florida State. It's over 110 degrees on the field for both games. <laughs> and uh, I think it was 114, I believe, on uh, Thursday, and uh, or 116 on Thursday and 114 on Sunday. One of the two, I can't. But it's hot. <laughs> All right, by any definition uh, of the word, it is hot. And you have these teams, again, I'm, I'm not talking about just A&M. I'm talking about Florida State, Washington State, and Texas A&M. It, it just gives you an idea of the kind of athletes that these young women are. Imagine yourself, if you will, that they are, uh, that you're going to go out and you're going to run six and a half or seven miles. And not at a casual sprint. But at a uh, a ferocious sprint, a, a, a ferocious sprint, not just some casual run on a Sunday morning or something like that. But at the same time, you're going front, you're going forward, you're going backward, you're going left, and you're going right, and you're getting knocked down and knocking other people down, and all that uh, at a very very p fast pace. And you don't get to take a TV timeout. You get you get one uh, hydration break because the temperature is so high, but you, then you've got to go back out there for another 22 and a half minutes. Um, I mean, it just, it never ceases to amaze me the type of athletes at, uh, that are playing uh, women's college soccer. Yeah, and it's, it's, only, it's only gotten, you know, more competitive and more competitive and more competitive over time. But the, uh, you know, the other thing that I think that a lot of people, you know, th that this was, this was an extraordinary weekend um, and I've been I've been here for a while, and you know when I was I was talking to folks on Sunday as we were walking up, and I was like, you know, this really feels like I don't remember it being this hot before, and <laughs> I, and I and I really don't. I mean, that's I, because I, it wasn't. The, and the the last it? time I remember it being this hot was like back in '95, like 1995, and um, when we played Marquette, and that was on an, a Sunday afternoon, and this was before we had lights. So we had to play in the middle of the afternoon, and uh, and it was kind of along along those lines. We played. We had to play a full double overtime game. Well, we don't play overtimes anymore in in the regular season in the NCAA. So only to find out at the end of the game when we you know when we go home and turn on the news and Shell Winkley has said, "Hey, it was 112 today. It was the hottest day in <laughs> in the history of, right. of College Station, Bryan College Station." So um, it it really was you know the hottest day, and I know. That this coming weekend is supposed to be another scorching, scorching temperature, you know, whether on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So, for those reasons, we pushed back the start of the game on on Saturday, and that's as much for the fans as it is for the uh, for the competitors. So, the game on Saturday when Baylor comes to town, we've pushed that game, the kickoff of that game, and they've done this for high school football games. I know down in Houston. Instead of kicking off at seven o'clock, that game is going to now ki going to kick off at eight o'clock, which, which is right around sunset. Which will make it, once the sun goes down, it's significantly, you know, more comfortable for everybody else. I think it'll be more comfortable for the players. I know it'll be a lot more comfortable for those for the uh, students on the uh, on the east side who look into the sun. Oh yeah, it'll be a lot more comfortable for them because it's going to be a full house. It's it's fish camp night, so it'll be uh, there's no place to uh, to escape. The uh, the heat if you're in in the and the sun if you're looking into the sun so by by making the game right at at or right after sunset it'll be a lot easier for everybody to be in the crowd and a, a little bit easier on on the fa on the fans but I think it'll be better for the players as well. I have one question that I have to get off my chest. Sure. Uh, and I will bring it up uh, so that you won't get in trouble, um, but. Is it not the case? Uh, I'm talking about the Washington State game on Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, 
the goal that they scored off of a PK. Is it not the case that the ruling is, is if you go – The penalty kick. The penalty kick that the referee called on the, the, the slide tackle where yeah. Margaret Matula came in and played the ball and then okay, the girl I'm trying to over. keep you out of trouble now. Right. Don't talk yourself into it. No, no. I'm just <laughs> trying to describe for people what, yeah. what it might have looked like for some people who might have seen it might have seen the game. Yeah, I, here's my here's my question. You're exactly right. Margot Matula makes what I think is an outstanding slide tackle, goes through, gets ball first the whole way, and I've looked at this 47 times. Um, if you if you get the ball, if you knock the ball away first and then uh, clip the player, mm-hmm. that is not a foul, correct? Uh, right, but when I talked to the fourth official on the sideline, uh-huh. he assured me that she wiped out the player and never touched the ball. So uh-huh. you don't have to th- worry about anything. That um, what you saw uh-huh. did not happen. Did not happen. Did okay, not well happen. that's good to know. And that that's good anyone to know. who saw it the way you saw it, uh-huh. you were not you were not at Ellis Field. That uh-huh. did not happen. That, okay. That must have been, that was in your imagination. Okay. And the, that did not happen. That was not reality. Okay. All right. Well, that's did good not to know. Happen. That's did good to know. Did not happen. <laughs> okay. Just wanted to yep. check. That was the way. That's not the way it happened. Okay. <laughs> good. That's good to know. Yep. I'm. I'm. Uh, I just. It's, it's factual. Yeah, absolutely, it is. Of course, it is. So, uh, I was looking at the schedule today. Going back, uh, Thomas Dick, our sports information director uh, extraordinaire. Um, Puts out his history of the uh, the t- games, our our, our uh, records against the teams we're about to play. I did not realize we have not played Baylor since 2013. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just seems like you know we played them, of course, in the in the same conference in the Big 12. Obviously, played them at least once a year, sometimes twice when you count the tournament. But we have not played since 2013, and of course, the very last game we played against them was a Texas A&M victory, and I remember that game very, very well. Happened to be broadcasting it on radio from the east side over there and the uh, above the press box over there, where uh, one of their players took out Annie Coons about. So you're trying to wind me up again, aren't you? <laughs> Five, five seconds. No, it was into nine the seconds. Game. It was nine, nine seconds, seconds into the game, which I suspect that the reason we haven't played Baylor since then and that particular event, there could have been some relationship, some coincidence there. Yeah, so so th- there's been a coaching change. I know that. There's been That's a couple true. coaching changes since That's then true. where the Baylor player got got a yellow card nine seconds into the, into game, the game for uh, for for taking Andy Coons out at the knees. And um, and they said that that was, that was just a coincidence. And so we asked the referee about that, if he'd, if he'd ever given a card that early. And he said he was shocked. It, it might have been a red card, but he was so shocked that he, the first card he grabbed was yellow. Um, but, yeah, no, there, that was just a coincidence. And, um, but in, in, in fairness to uh, Baylor and to this, and that's a phrase that I don't often say, but nonetheless, uh, in fairness to Baylor, this is a different coaching staff with a different philosophy. It is. And, and you know, and, and, and even, even the coaching staff then, we're, we're friends. We've made right. up, and, and it's, all, it's all good. And, uh, but but uh, Michelle Leonard, who is, who is the head coach there now, and, uh, and that coaching staff, they've, they really have – they've – it's a, it's a different type of it's a different type of system and it's a different type of team and you know and they're off to a good start they uh, you know they they went out to Oregon and really took it to uh, took it to the Ducks and uh, you know beat them in in uh, in Oregon and then they went on the road and uh, and a tough weekend played at Oregon and then played in Lincoln against uh, against Nebraska so then now they're going to come to College Station so they're they're on on quite a uh, start of the season playing playing three tough road games. So, um, you know, they, they came and, and played us in the spring. They actually beat us um, here in the spring. So they're, uh, they're in, in an exhibition game. So I'm sure they'll be coming in with a lot of confidence and, uh, you know, to, to try to get a, a win in front of the 12th man will be uh, something that I'm, they'll come in with a lot of confidence to play. And speaking of which, it is uh, obviously, as Coach G said, the fish camp game. And again, I want to remind everybody the game time moved back from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock on Saturday night. Uh, 12th Man uh, Mobile, uh, 12th Man uh, Rewards is back. If you're having trouble with the uh, 12th Man Mobile app, uh, be patient, uh, understanding they're, they're, they're working on that, and uh, we'll get it uh, sorted out here. 
But, uh, you know, again, you, 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 I've said this many, many times before, the fish camp game, is, it's a wonderful, wonderful game. It will, it should be a uh, full house. But the 12th man at soccer uh, is an incredibly powerful force because you are so close to the field. You have such a big impact on the game. And uh, your support means so very much to this team. So I uh, just wanted to mention that again. We're getting ready to quick, uh, take a quick break. want to remind you that Micaiah McDonald and Sam Smith, speaking of people who had a big effect on a game, they certainly did. Uh, both of them this weekend had great opening weekends. And last but not least, before I forget, uh, before I came over here, uh, it's my dad's 96th birthday, so I wanted to say uh, – Happy birthday. Yeah, I wanted to say uh, happy birthday to my dad, Rennie Ellis, Folks in the neighborhood threw him a great party, and uh, we had a huge time. So uh, uh, happy birthday, Dad. Love you. All right. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back right after this. You're listening to the Aggie Soccer Hour. We're here at Rudy's Barbecue on okay. Harvey Road. Second uh, segment of the program means it's uh, the segment where we have, of, uh, have two of our players on, and Starting off uh, with a good trend, we had we have two players here uh, this evening that both had outstanding had the outstanding weekends. So we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But first, the thing we have to do uh, is we always come back with the uh, Rudy's Barbecue Reader, and the people don't want to hear me read it. Uh, I do that all the time. So. Uh, I asked both of them. Of course, neither neither uh, Mac nor Sam has read before, and, and since Mac has been here, uh, she volunteered to do it, and Sam was very pleased to hear that. So uh, okay. Mac is going to read the Rudy's Barbecue Reader. Just here's, here's the one thing you have to do, okay? Alrighty. Just don't mess it up, okay? Oh no pressure. So <laughs> go. Soccer. And barbecue lovers know the perfect brisket needs the right wood. Rudy smokes all their meats using their delicious signature rubs in 100% oak-fired pits. Get your real Texas barbecue fixed today at Rudy's or on the web at rudys.com. Hey, it's what I'm talking about right there. There you go. That was good, man. You, <laughs> you, got, a, you got a future in showbiz. <laughs> when your soccer career is done, which is going to be a long time from now, uh, Micaiah McDonald, Sammy Smith, uh, Micaiah here in her junior season. I have said this on the broadcast, Mac, a couple of times. It's like every year you step your game up, and it was noticeable this year, and you have become a force uh, to deal with. And I want you to talk about, you know, about that a little bit and, and in, terms of your, uh, in terms of the off season, what you do to make yourself better. Um, yeah, I think it starts in January once we're done with the season and, you know, it's time to do some reflection. And I think after my sophomore year, I was very self-aware and I was, um, you know, I reflected a lot after my sophomore year because I'm halfway through college at this point. So I was like, where do I want to be? What do I want to do my junior year? So in January, I started, I talked to the coaches and we talked about what I need to do. And I need to get better at defending and also scoring goals. So in January, I started, uh, when I was at home, I started training three times a week and I was on the pitch and I was working on my go-to skill moves. I was working on getting low and working on defending as well. And I think from January to July, before I stepped on the field to play SMU, I was ready to play and I was very confident in what I was able to do. Well, and, and I'm, I am, didn't really give you a proper introduction. Uh, obviously a junior from, uh, Lancaster, Texas, but I mean, you all know her if you watched any Aggie soccer at all. You had a goal and an assist. Uh, talk a little bit about the assist to uh, across in to Sam. Uh, talk about that one, if you will. Uh, yeah, of course. Florida State is a great team. Uh, they're good on both sides of the ball, but they also had weaknesses. And so we had a game plan going in, and it was to look for that back post. And so when Sammy came in the game, um, I had a chance where I was able to run down the sideline and get my body around the ball. And I looked up and I saw Sammy making that run in, and she was able to get her head on the ball, and we were able to get that goal. Absolutely. Just popped it right over the defender that was in front of her and in a place where the goalkeeper couldn't get it. Yes, wanted sir. to ask you about the – and 
Sam, you're going to be coming up next, so okay, don't, don't go I'm to ready. sleep on me. I'm ready. Uh, but I also wanted to talk to you about your goal uh, on Sunday. Just a great ball in from Carissa Beckman. And, and you and Jazz kind of were – you were you were making sort of an inside out run. She was kind of making an outside in run. You guys were right there, and you picked the ball off and finished it. Yes, sir. Um, I think us making that same run, but also communicating and saying, "Hey, I got it," was uh, really crucial in that moment, and also caused a little chaos in the box where I was able to, you know, just hit it in right in front of the goalkeeper. Well, you cause chaos pretty much every time you get on the ball. That's for sure. And uh, Sam, this uh, first of all, uh, Sammy Smith. Uh, all ACC when she was a freshman, and if you're talking about all ACC, the Atlantic Coast Conference, that's saying something, number one. And Ben, academic honor roll, uh, every year she was at Boston College. She is a in her fifth year of eligibility using the COVID uh, eligibility rules and working on your master's. Is that correct? Yes. What, yeah. uh, master's in what? So I'm doing the um, one-year master's program in entrepreneurial leadership. Fantastic. Yeah. In the College of Business? In the College of Business. Oh, yes. that's always easy. No problem there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, your all region uh, uh, from the uh, all region third team, United Coaches uh, All Atlantic region, I should say. I'll get it out in just a minute. Uh, but 23 goals and six assists at Boston College. Scored your first one uh, at Texas A&M. How did that feel? Oh, it felt really good. Um, but, I mean, I have to give all the credit to Mac. That was a perfect <laughs> ball. I just needed to stand there and let it hit my, hit my head. There was nothing else I could have done with that. Yeah, but you did. You know, sometimes it's like when, when, you, when you get a perfect pass like that, it's almost too easy, and that's the one you mess up. Yeah. But you didn't. I mean, there was, a, there was a defender right in front of you, and you sent it over her and just inside the post when the keeper, where the keeper couldn't get it. Yeah. I got to ask you this. I asked you one time when you, it was just you and I talking, but um, here you are, you know, from Hanson, Massachusetts. So grew up in, in, in Massachusetts, went to Boston College, and here you find yourself in College Station, Texas, and it's hot. <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> How are you liking it? Oh, my gosh. It is an adjustment, <laughs> to say the least, especially seeing all the record-breaking heat everything on the news and everything like that. I'm like, it would be record-breaking heat when I come down here. <laughs> that just makes sense. But um, it's definitely been an adjustment. I got down here in May, so I'm kind of glad that I got down here a little early so I could adjust to the heat a little bit. Um, so I'm a little more used to it, but it's definitely something to deal with on a daily basis. Well, speaking of adjustments, um, you know, you were in w at one college for four years. You were a captain at Boston College and, and uh, an integral part of that team. So you know everybody. You knew where everything was. You know, you've been there four years. And now you come to a completely different pl a place. How big of an adjustment was it for you just to get integrated into the team and into the university? Um, I mean, I was a little nervous at first, but the, the girls on the team are so welcoming, and I, I got to live with a couple of them, so that makes the adjustment a little easier. Um, but, I mean, the girls are so welcoming. The team is so welcoming. The culture is just, like, really easy to fit in. So um, it wasn't that big of an adjustment. Plus, I got to meet the girls a little bit on my visit, and so I kind of um, got to know them a little bit, and so it was a little easier to fit in. G, I wanted to ask you, I mean, you you get these people to come to Texas A&M. Of course, Makaya came out of high school, and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, Sam comes after having finished a degree at Boston College. Um, what attracted you to them as potential soccer players at Texas A&M? Well, with Sammy, we knew she was she was already going to be she, – she had already proven herself as a leader and someone who could play at a really high level because there's not that many – there's not that many people who can step in and be, you know, an impact player for us already um, because we're, we're, we're playing at a pretty high level. And, but, but she checked all those boxes as far as leader, um, personality type of player, and someone who was going to be able, we thought and we know can step in and, and really do something immediately. And so having her come in and see how she was going to do with the team was going to be important for us. And she, you know, being around the girls, you know, the girls were like, she's awesome. She's fantastic. She's fantastic. So we're like going, okay, here we go. Because we I was a little worried, like, okay, how's this Boston girl going to do with a bunch of kids <laughs> from Texas? How is this going to work out? Right. And, 
And it it was a you know it was a, a really really neat match, and that's that's always a big part of it because I I think on in women's athletics I think the the cultural fit is a is such an important part of it. They they have to be able to they have to be able to be good teammates, and and and, and Sammy has has been a just a a, a really really good fit and a very good a good complementary fit to what's what's out there. And she's only you know scratched the surface. As she gets more comfortable sure. and more comfortable. Sure. You know the goal she scored against Florida State is just the first of many. I think she's gonna she's gonna bang home for us. Okay, uh, Mike, I needed to ask you another question and something that's, you know, I I didn't play soccer growing up. I played baseball, but I can only throw the ball left-handed. Okay, I can. That's I, give me a p baseball, put it in my right hand. I'm worthless. Okay, <laughs> can only do it with my left hand. But you you play on the right side, you play on the left side some. You, you, I mean, you developed both sides of your game. Talk a little bit about how much time do you spend on doing that? I mean, how difficult was, was it for you to move away from your natural side to pick up strength on the other, with the other side? Um, I think a lot of practice and work. Um, implementing what I do in practice and then transitioning to the game. Um, I'm very good with crossing the ball on my right foot and also shooting, but I've also been putting the work to also be comfortable with if I cut inside to also shoot with my left foot as well or mm -hmm. to make those passes down the line with my left foot. So I think it was just a lot of practice and work. Well, it's, cer it's <laughs> certainly showing up, that is for sure. Uh, and Sam, I've got a question for you, uh, Card here. <laughs> Why do people call you Baker Sam? This is a great question, and I know exactly who's asking that, my roommate <laughs> over there. Um, but I used to work at a bakery back home, and so, I don't know, one of my stress-relieving activities is to make cookies, so I've been making a lot of cookies for my teammates. <laughs> okay. So ba that's, yeah. Baker Sam. Baker Sam. All right. Caught on. That's it. Have you had any of your cookies, Mac? I have. I scored a goal, and I got a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> that's the deal on the team. You score a yeah. goal, you get a cookie. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. I like that. All right, uh, Micaiah McDonald, uh, Sammy Smith, again, two more reasons why uh, you need to support this Texas A&M soccer team. They are n not only great soccer players, but they are great representatives of women's athletics in general. And thank you both for taking time to come by and visit with us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with the third segment of the Aggie Soccer Hour from Rudy's Barbecue on Harvey Road. All righty, we are back here at Rudy's Barbecue on Harvey Road. It's the th third segment of the Aggie Soccer Hour with Texas A&M head coach G. Guerreri. And, G, I have a question from the audience that leads right into uh, having uh, Seth Taylor on the show, and that is Perfect. Uh, about being able to add a third assistant coach and what you did with that. When did that come about and, and what you decided to do, obviously? So th this is actually part of the um, the transformation uh, of the NCAA. So the uh, there's been there's been a, a, some shifting of the NCAA over the last few years, and um, you know you hear about NIL and you hear about all these different things going on within the NCAA and the transformation committee that happened. And one of the big changes that they that they've done is that they. They got rid of the position that was called the uh, the volunteer coach, right. and they basically figured out that um, you can't really have slave labor anymore for some reason. <laughs> um, you can't force people to work with no pay, uh -huh. and uh, they decided that if if you're going to have uh, you can have four coaches, but you got to pay them, and you got to pay all of them. And so th we went from being able to go with our our fourth coach being a uh, a non-paid coach to a full-time coach, and so we were able to uh, to do that. And so we did a national search for our our new coach, and uh, came up with uh, uh, what we think is a home run with uh, with Seth. So Seth came over from uh, from Cal Baptist, where he was instrumental in helping them to take the big step from being Division Two, Division Two power. To Division One, there in the uh, in the in the Western Athletic Conference, and he was, like I said, the associate head coach, where he had a, a huge role in a lot of different, had his fingers in a lot of different parts of that program, and was able to to bring him and his young family over to uh, to Aggieland. So Seth, first of all, you've been here since when? Well, I did a camp in July, 
but I got here at the very end of July, so I've been here for about, with the whole family, about three weeks. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay, so, you, so for a while, uh, it was just you, right, until yeah. your family got here? Yeah, the first couple of weeks I was here, I was, um, since I was working the camp, G was gracious enough to put me in a nice hotel, and then I was living in Callaway for a little bit, kind of uh-huh. doing that whole thing. And then I let my wife, as anybody should, I let her choose where we were going to live, what house we were going to rent, and everything like that. So when we moved out here, we were good to go, and that was already. I let her set that all up. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes. So what, what uh, you've, you've gone from, from uh, Cal Baptist to here. Mm-hmm. Uh, biggest adjustments for you, other than it's half a continent away? Well, one of the adjustments, it's surprising, but Sammy said it earlier, it's definitely hotter than I thought it would be. <laughs> but yeah, we apologize. But honestly, like I've lived, I'm not, I always, I told you this on the interview process, like I lived in California for a decade, but I'm not a Californian. I am from Ohio. So like I've lived in a lot of places, so it's not hard for me to adjust to new things, new people. And honestly, for, for us, we were kind of looking for a change, um, at least for the time being. So it was an easy adjustment, but I said, yeah, the one thing, and I know Texas is like hitting like records right now for, right. for the heat. So it's not a normal thing to be this hot right now, but that's one thing. Um, and then like, obviously the pace of things here is like a little bit slower as you would expect from where I was before. But now that campus has opened up, I learned that there's almost as much traffic as LA had, honestly. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, yes. You need, you need to keep your head on a swivel. I for mean, sure. just give you a heads for up sure. on that. What are your duties? Talk about what you do for Texas A&M soccer. Yeah, um, my main duty um, right now is a little bit of, I do a lot of the film. So, like, I'll do player development with the film. So, today I had um, five girls come to my office, and we, like, look at the film from the game. What can we do better? I'm doing the scouting reports. And then one of the really cool things that we're doing with the new technology, during the games, I'm actually live tagging the games. And for people that don't know in the audience, it's like, I'm taking clips from the game as the game's going on, and then we go in at halftime, and we show those clips live of what happened in the first half of the adjustments we can make for the second half. So it's actually a pretty cool technology. It's pretty new, and it's, a, it's really fun to do. So the players are getting feedback at halftime on what they did in the, in the first half yep. and what, what you think and the coaching staff, the rest of the coaching staff, thinks that you can do in the second half. Correct. Right? Correct. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll go into G's office, and I'll get like six or seven important clips. We go over them as a staff. What is a good thing that we should show the girls? And we literally watch things that could have happened three minutes earlier at the end of the half. And we can be like, hey, this is an adjustment we can make. This is something we're doing well, just so they can reinforce it with some video. Excellent. I mean, yeah. uh, how big an impact does that technology have, G? Well, it's huge. We've got, so we have fixed cameras. We have some fixed cameras at the top of the light poles at the center of the west side, the center, center light pole at the very, very top of that light pole. We have a fixed camera at the big video, atop of the big video board right. uh, between the letters, if you were to look really closely. And then we have another fixed camera on the north end. Um, there's a, above the film platform where the TV, cam- the TV film platform, we have, a, we have a camera up there. So uh, Seth can actually toggle between those cameras if he wants to. And then you can actually even zoom down with those cameras as, as you go along. But that's, those are the cameras that he's looking at on his, on his laptop. He's pretty close to where you right, guys are exactly. doing the broadcast. Mm-hmm. And then he's, you know, you know kind of tagging, uh, it's the terminology, but tagging those, those things. And so for us, because this generation is so visual as they're growing up, they have, they have so many visual types of learning devices. It's, it's in, you know, we can, we can try to describe things, but if you have pictures, and especially moving pictures, that you can show them what we're talking about, it's like the aha moments that, that we can give them. And then we can say, listen, this, these are the spaces we're talking about that we want to try to attack. And it's like, oh, those are the spaces you want us to do it, to attack. It's pretty obvious to see. And this is the, the best, we think is the best way to, to use the time that we have at halftime is to show them specifics of this is what worked, this is, what the other, this is what the opponent is trying to do to stop us, and this is what the opponent's doing that's working against us. This is how we're going to stop them, and then we can move on to, you know, whatever, whatever adjustments we need to make. So, Seth, what, for you, was this kind of a, a, a new s- uh, skill set that you had to develop? I mean, had you worked with this particular technology before, looked at it this way before? Yeah, I've done it before. We had, we had Speedio at, the, at CBU where I was before, so I had done it for about a year. We had had it for about a year, so... I wouldn't say I was a professional, but I knew how to do it. And, it's, and if I'm being completely honest, it's not my favorite thing to do in the world. I like to do it. I like to, but I like the whole all-encompassing thing where you get to do it and you get to talk to the players later and coach them through that. So 
it's a really it's a really cool opportunity. See, one of the differences is is there's there's people out there that are specific video analysts, mm -hmm. but we what we wanted and what made Seth so attractive is Seth is first a coach who can do video, right. not a video person who wants to be a coach. If okay. that makes sense. No, it does. Absolutely. So, so he's, he speaks he speaks coaching language, and he's a coach first, so he can translate th that as a coach and a, as an educator, as a coach. Um, but he's adept at, at video. So he's very For good sure. at helping the players understand and being able to coach the players. But he's but he's adept at the video and, and the technology of video. So he's very good at getting then dispersing the video to the players, but also to the rest of the coaching staff. Right. And that we all speak the same language. So, uh, so Seth, like during today's practice, for example, yeah. um, Tuesday, a Wednesday type practice during the course of the week, which is the really typically the kind of the bigger, more intense uh, practices, yeah. I would think. Um, what, what's your role on the field? And yeah. are you using what happened in the last game and what you saw in the last game for sure in those practices. And I think G described it well. Like the one thing that's really cool that I'm getting to do is like I'm not just a video guy. Right. Like, during the practice today, I got to open up the practice with like a game. We did like a technical warm up and I led the technical warm up. Okay. And then we're like helping with drills and we're talking to players. But afterward, what we'll do is we'll take a look. One of the cool things we do is we give the players an opportunity to look at every practice. We, we record every practice. Right. And if there's important things from that practice that we think is going to help in the game, we'll tag, we'll even tag that practice so they can go back and look at the clips from practice. Okay. So. While that's going on, we're recording practice, but I'm also doing a lot of coaching during practice too. Okay. Yeah. Are you? Uh, do you send individual things to individual players that hey, this is something you need, you need to do or don't do or whatever? They're making it a little harder these days uh, to do that with um, the new software that they have out there. But one of the things we're trying to do is get the players. Well, the really cool thing about Speedio is they have access to everything. So anything we clip, the girls can watch it from their place. Okay, Every from their th apartment. Yeah, or so they can just wherever. watch it. Anything on there. Um, we have another software. We have to send it out ourselves, so we just kind of have to download it and send it to them ourselves, which is a thing that we're learning how to do as we speak. So, okay. Yeah. Super. I mean, I know for you're still you're still uh, a young guy, but I mean, has has video the role of it? You seeing it evolve like every year in terms of new technologies, new new things. Oh, for sure. You can you can just tell like, and especially with the software now, it makes it easier. And like like G said, like we're growing up in an era where. People are watching video since they're two years old. I know my daughter, like she watches video <laughs> every day, right? So that's right, how we get her to go right. to sleep at night. And I'm like, it's just something that they can see. Plus the visual aid of just seeing yourself do it, it just helps so much. So it's, I think it's taking a bigger and bigger role for sure. Well, we are so glad you are here. And, Appreciate and, that. And, and uh, you know, that we have here in a, in a paid capacity uh, to be a part of the uh, Aggie soccer program, for, we hope for a long, long time. Oh, I just got one question from one of the players over here. Who submitted this question? Oh, no, nobody it's probably a very it. innocent question, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure it hope. is. No, actually, uh, well, I don't know if it is or not, but that is, what's been your favorite part of College Station so far? Gosh, my favorite part. Well, my wife just walked in here with my daughter, by the way, who just got back from swimming lessons. Oh, so right. cool. <laughs> but uh, my, my favorite part, we, like, we've, we've kind of used the first few weeks to explore everything. Right. One of the things we really liked, I know we went over to Lake Walk at Traditions. We went to the sushi place, and we really liked that area. We thought that was a really cool spot oh, to Chef go. Tay, so Chef Tay's new place. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. And my daughter is literally on stage right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's okay. <laughs> all righty. We're going to take another quick break. We'll be right back right after this. That is Seth Taylor. He's going to be here for a while, ladies That's and gentlemen. Awesome. Aggie Soccer Hour will be right back right after this. <laughs> Finished with... Uh, New assistant coach Seth Taylor, and of course, before that we had uh, Sam Smith and Micaiah McDonald. Glad to have them here. Um, and it's another weekend. It's another game, another soccer game. Just one game this week, but it's a big game. Uh, kind of a renewal of an old Big 12 rivalry. Uh, Texas A&M and the Baylor Bears. As Baylor will come down here, I want to say right at the outset again, and you'll hear this throughout the week. Game time. Uh, has been changed to 8 o'clock, all right, 8 o'clock. And that uh, way it'll be a little bit cooler. That's close to sunset around that time. And so the temperatures will uh, start to cool off a little bit out at Ellis Field. So uh, be sure and come on out. It is the fish camp game. It is, it is so much fun. This is the first time the new the freshmen uh, have an opportunity to go 
to the to an athletic event as a part of the twelfth man, and so it's centered around uh, all the various different fish camps who come come to the game, and it will be. Uh, and I, I had the, I had the opportunity to go and speak to almost all of the. Uh, so there's, I believe there are seven different fish camp sessions. Um, a, B, C, D, you know, all the way through. And um, I had a chance to go and speak to uh, to most of them as they were kind of uh, mustering before they, they took off up to uh, uh, up to the up to Palestine to go and uh, and 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 do the, all of their activities. And um, you know, talk to them about how you know being a member of the twelfth man is is almost like having a you know a super superhuman strength type of, of thing. And and how being a member of the of the 12th man it, you know comes with responsibilities but it also comes with you know kind of being part of the scattering report that a lot of teams have about coming to to A&M that it's it really is uh you know something special that the teams are the teams sometimes fear what the 12th man can do and so it's kind of cool for them this is their first opportunity to be to be that that factor in uh, in games and there will be a lot of freshmen at that game and there's a huge youth tournament going on that weekend. So um, there's 130 different youth teams that are coming in and playing in the Aguiland Friendship Cup that same weekend. So it's about a about a $2 million impact on the uh, local community that goes on with youth soccer that's also happening that weekend that a Challenge Soccer Club puts on. So it's a uh, big, big, um, big, big weekend for us. And I know that f so folks who are coming – Get there early. I know concessions will be going on. They'll, they'll be doing a lot of different, different things there. There's a lot of giveaways that will all be going on behind the East Stand. All of A&M Properties will be doing a lot of their uh, their promotions with the Dixie Chicken and all those other different giveaways that will be happening. There's going to be a whole games area over there under the tents on the northwest, in the northwest corner. I think they're going to have, like, um, you know, kind of uh, all kinds of, like, activities, almost like a midway type of area over there and a DJ and – the Hullabaloo Band, that'll be their first game of the season. So lots and lots of fun stuff happening, and, uh, and, and I think will be a really, a really entertaining game with us in Baylor as well. And once again, the game start time has been moved from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m., so mm -hmm. it ought to be uh, getting comfortable out there if for some reason – like you have a written excuse from a doctor or something like that. I mean, it's got to be good. You can listen on the radio on 97.3 FM, 12th Man mobile app, RadioAggieland.com. Casey Atnip, Atnip and uh, David Nuno will have the call there. It's also be on the uh, SEC Plus network. Jeff Given and I will have the call there. But uh, In the ESPN app, right? Yes, mm -hmm. ESPN app. Thank you. Um, uh, but beyond that, most importantly, come out to Ellis Field and be a part of this game and this atmosphere. These players uh, deserve your support. They are going to be – this is going to be a good team. Mark my words. And uh, uh, this is a great, great weekend to get it all started. want to look hey, – we've got just a couple of minutes left here. I want to look at uh, real quickly some games from last week. Uh, Tennessee, impressive win over Cal at yeah. home, four to one. Yeah, uh, and I think that kind of sends a message to uh, to you know the country. They, really, the SEC had one of the highest winning percentages in uh, in the country for I think a 720 winning percentage across. We, like I said, we didn't help out any with with our our two close losses, but um, I think that you know we've, we we showed that we're going to be in these games and we're we are able to play with anybody. Now we just have to beat anybody, but um, you know. That game, I think, kind of was an eyebrow raiser. Now, Cal then just went from losing to Tennessee, went over to Carolina and got throttled by Carolina right. as well. So maybe it's a deal of what is, what's Cal thinking. Right. But, uh, yeah, they, they – uh, the, so Tennessee scoring four on, on the night on, uh, on Thursday night. It was a big win for them. Um, South Carolina uh, in a, their big rivalry game against Clemson. You know, the South Carolina came in ranked number 12, Clemson number 25. That was a uh, a draw, but it's still a good result for the league to uh, you know to ACC SEC uh, results. Um, Mississippi State went on the road and uh, beat Grand Canyon, which is not a bad result. Arkansas throttled Arkansas State. A lot of times, I didn't think the Arkansas schools were allowed to play um, the Hogs, but they they I think they've loosened up those those yeah. rules so yep. that they can now. 
Florida got two wins. They beat East Carolina, and then they also beat Maryland. The, the win over Maryland is a big result for, uh, for the Gators. And then also, uh, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, Auburn getting a, a, a big win o- over Troy was probably a good, a good result for those guys too. So uh, UCLA uh, beat Georgia. Georgia is a team that a lot of people are expecting a lot of things from, and uh, they went out on the West Coast. And before the hurricane hit, they took on number one UCLA, lost 2 nothing, and uh, their game against USC was canceled, so they didn't get a chance to really show. Yeah, yeah I mean, if I ask you the question, uh, okay, USC was going to play Georgia, but it, uh, it got canceled for, uh, because of a hurricane. Where would you guess that that uh, game was played? About 99.99% of the people said, well, in Georgia, obviously. <laughs> exactly. so they don't get hair hurricanes exactly. in California, but there you go. But some uh, big games this week coming up yes. this week. And we've got, uh, we've got just a – 30 seconds. So uh, Georgia is going to host Central Florida. That's a that's a potential top 25 uh, game that's going to be in Athens on Thursday. Uh, LSU is going to go over to Austin. Sunday games, uh, number eight, Arkansas going to go to Notre Dame. That'll be, a I think, a really entertaining game. And then, of course, uh, Alabama is going to host number 20, Memphis. Those are the big games featuring SEC teams, in addition, of course, to Baylor coming to Aggieland 8 o'clock on Saturday night. Baylor Bears, Texas A&M, as G just said, at Ellis Field, 8 o'clock Saturday night. Be there. I want to remind you this copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield IMG College under broadcasting rights granted by Texas A&M University. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the express written consent of Texas A&M University and Learfield IMG College. Announcers are provided by Learfield IMG College and Texas A&M University. For G. Guerreri, I'm David Ellis. Thanks for listening and watching, everybody, and gig em.